Oh, there it is. Ha! All right, well, that works. Yeah. Now you can hear me. I can hear you. 27 people ready to get started. Just wait, Pat. It's going to be all right. Got some sound. Set mute button to keep me from saying bad things. All right. Thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, right. Hey, Dr. Ray, let's get let's get this going. All right. Now we got some sound. All right. Let's bring this volume down just a wee bit so I don't kill you guys. All right. Matthew chapter two. Remember, we started out. Um, we started out with the genealogy of Jesus. We had uh, very clear evidence that this was to the Abraham and David crowd, that this was who it swore. Hey, buddy. Oops, fumble. Um, and so then we went and had the birth of Jesus. Um, he's the seventh seven, 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to Babylon, 14 generations in Babylon to the Christ six sevens he's the seventh seven born of a virgin born god with us emmanuel so let's take a look at the text here why not and there we go so we're going to be doing matthew chapter two let's move that over here all right matthew two uh, now Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold. You know, behold is the Lat in Latin is ecce. In Greek it's adieu. And that is Thor's look command. Ecce, Thor. Ecce. You can't see, but he's looking at me and not the tree. It's his, it's his look command. Behold, magi, magoi, from the um, rising from the east... They arrive in Jerusalem saying, where is the child born king? The one, the, the, the one born king of the Jews. We have seen his star in the, again, rising, where the sun rises, the east. Hi, Lisa Kimball. L Linda Kimball, excuse me. Hi, Linda. Um, uh, we've seen his star in the rising and have come to worship him. To proscune him. So this is a big deal. Uh, the epiphany is our Lord's Christmas for Gentiles, for sinners. That's what this is about. Um, after he was born, in the days of Herod the king, hold that king, hold that king. So Herod the king is the king in Jerusalem. Wise men show up from the east and they ask the king in the city of the king, Jerusalem. They ask the king, where's the one born king? Now, that troubles Jerusalem, troubles the king and all Jerusalem with him. Is my friend Meg here? How exciting is that? All right. Um, so Herod the king and all of Jerusalem with him is troubled by the arrival of the Magi asking for the king. I, I want you to think about this. In ancient, if, if you're the king and somebody shows up looking for the one born king and you're the king, what is your thought process there? Your immediate thought process is, uh-oh, somebody's here to replace me. Um, it's black. There's nothing going on with the cup. Um, so, so, of course, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. What a great word. Um, he was alarmed. And all Jerusalem with him. 
So if you have the picture of the wise guys, the magi, these wise seers, these um, guys from the east, we don't know how many there is. We don't know if they're we three kings of Orient are. We don't know if they're three kings. We don't know how many kings there are. Here's what we know, okay? We know that wise guys from the east, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem um, looking for the one born king. So uh, they go to the place where the king should be in Jerusalem. Uh, <laughs> the king should be in Jerusalem looking for the king. And if you picture them as three guys, you're, you're probably not right. Because their arrival is so huge, <laughs> huge, that it troubles and stirs not just the court of the king, but all of Jerusalem with it. So I sort of like to picture this. Um, I like to I like to sort of think of this as is as as like you remember Aladdin. When Prince Ali shows up, Prince Ali, mighty is he, Ali above. Well, um, all of that, that whole spectacle, all right, of the arrival of someone important is what happens with the um, uh, wise, uh, the arrival of the wise men. Their arrival signals something big is going on. All right. And what do they say? We saw his rising in the east and have come to worship him, to proskune him. They're going to get down on their knees and they're going to worship him. A teeny bit more volume may be good. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? They, they want to worship the one born king of the Jews. They want to worship God. They want to, they want to, they want to worship God. Now, Jerusalem is troubled. The king is troubled. Nobody wants to worship him. But the wise men, the Gentiles, um, they want to worship him. This is what's so important. His own people don't want anything to do with him. Um, but these, these guys from the East, they want to worship him. Assembling the chief priests. So he synagogues the chief priests. That's the... Uh, that's the word. So he synagogues all of the chief priests and scribes of the people to uh, inquire from them when the Christ happens or bo is born, where the Christ is born. Poo. Poo is where. Um, I want you to sort of just take this in. They all know who he is. They all know who he is. They know he's the one born king of the Jews. They all know who he is. They know he's the Christ. So now, as we were looking for what the Christ is and who the Christ is, we now know the Christ is the king of the Jews, King David's son. We also learned last chapter that the Christ is the um, the Christ is the son of God. So he's the one, the one born king of the Jews is God himself. The one born king of the Jews is God himself. Who is the Greek word for where? Joe Madden. As a, and they know the guy who is born in Bethlehem of Judea is the Christ. 
So the, the scribes tell him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, second time we've had a reference to the scriptures, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd your people Israel. So now we know the, he's a shepherd, he's the son of God, he is God with us, he is um, the one born king. Herod then, he, uh, Lathra, he, he secretly, he secretly calls the, the Magi um, to determine from them the, pr the price chronon, the, price, the, the precise time of the stars appearing. So why does he want to know when, um, why does he want to know when the star appeared? Uh, they're not smarter. The Gentiles are not smarter. It's that the Gentiles want to worship him. That's the difference between the Gentiles and the, and the Jews at this point. The Jews have all these reasons to find him. Herod wants to find out what time the star appears so that he knows where uh, and, and where to go. So star appeared and where to go gives him a timeline on who to kill. Because that's the way you handle ancient, ancient rivals. If you're a king in the ancient world, let's, let's just pick any name. King Joe. King Joe, if he has a rival to his throne, will kill the rivals in Game of Thrones style. But the Gentiles are actually here to proscune. They're here to worship him. That's why this is so important. In Christian history, in the history of the church, Epiphany was considered Gentile Christmas. In fact, in some cultures, uh, Epiphany is, is the time in which, um, in which gifts are exchanged in some places, parts of the world, January 6th. This is our Christmas as Gentiles. Yes, I'm 6% Jew, but that means the 93% the of me is, um, is, is Gentile. 93 plus 7 is 100. That works. So, Herod summons them to find out what time. And then he says to them, he sends them to, to Bethlehem saying, um, as you are going, search diligently for the child. Um, uh, Poriunthentes is a um, aorist passive participle. Poriunthentes means as you're going or when you get to where you're going. And this is going to be used later on in Matthew 28. Um, as you're going, make disciples of all nations. So uh, so when, when, when somebody says to you, well, the first words of the Great Commission are go, that's not altogether... Um, that's all, not altogether true. The first words of the Great Commission are as you are going or when you get to where you're going. Um, so, as you're going, search diligently for the tile and when you have found him, bring me word that I may come and worship him. Now, he doesn't want to worship the one born king of the Jews. He doesn't want to worship the Christ. He wants to kill him. Because that's, uh, that's what the king wants to do. So Herod the king wants to kill Jesus the king who was born in Bethlehem where the Christ is to be born. I want you to think about this too. The birth of Jesus occurs in this little rinky-dink place where people would be like, what could comes out of there? You know, um, when I was growing up, I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and East Baton Rouge Parish uh, was where I was raised. But West Baton Rouge Parish, nothing could happen in West Baton Rouge Parish. 
And um, if you heard that something was going on in West, West Baton Rouge, you'd be like, what good happens if West Baton Rouge perish? The same with Bethlehem. Beth Bethlehem is this rinky-dink town. It is not Jerusalem where the king is. The king is. And so listening to the king. Now, again, don't miss this. Every word matters. Every word matters. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. Every word matters. So since every word matters, we have to sort of make sure that we don't miss somebody's at the door. So you're, you're going to hear the doorbell ring. Hey, come back to the come back to your bed, buddy. Here you go, bud. Jump in bed. Jump in bed. Jump in bed. Hop in. In the bed. Yeah, you didn't get that. So... I want you to sort of process this a little bit. Just, just sort of take it in. The attention is not on the big giant city. The attention is not on the, on the, on the king himself. The attention, all the attention, all the uh, everything is on this baby born in Bethlehem. But the chief priests and the scribes of the people, they don't go to Bethlehem. The, the king doesn't go to Bethlehem. He's going to send soldiers to Bethlehem. The ones that go to Bethlehem are, are these magi, these Gentiles from the east. And listening to, after they listening to the king, they, they went, they, and behold the star, which, which they had seen in its rising, went before them until Eus, it came to the place in which the child was. So, so they see the star in the east. Now, star tracking is not the most easy thing to do. And so they see the star in the east and they, and they, and they, they're following it, but they know they're going to Israel, and so they go to Jerusalem first. But then they find out from Herod that Bethlehem is the place where the, where the king is to be born, the Christ is to be born. So they go, but as they're going, the star leads them to the place, to the, to over, over the house where the, the, kid, the kid is. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced. And this is double rejoicing. And this is very Hebrew. So um, remember, I told you that, that, that ascertaining the year of, of Matthew's writing was impossible. Um, scholars usually think that it's, it's after the destruction of Jerusalem, but I don't think so. Um, I think that everything in the New Testament happens before that, before the destruction. Hey, buddy, how's it going? But here is something very important that you don't catch in the English. Matthew is written very Hebrew-like. This is a Hebrewism. Um, an intense double repeat of a word in Hebrew, a verb, is a way to, 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 to sort of uh, uh, make it the uh, mostest and bestest of it. It's not English, but you know what I'm saying. And so here the word rejoice is repeated. They rejoiced with great joy. Very great joy. Um, this is, uh, this happens in Hebrew all the time. Um, you eat of this tree, you will surely die, which is you will dead dead. Um, yes, I'm looking for superlatives, right? Uh, it's more than superlative. It's, it's in an intensive, um, good, better, best, that's superlative. Here, it's, 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 it's intense. It's, in, it's, it's over the top. It's, it's, well, it's a double repeat of the word. You eat of that tree and you'll be dead, dead. They're, they rejoice with exceedingly great rejoicing. I would rub my arm too if, if it meant getting a treat. And going into the house, verse 11, going into the house, I want you to sort of stop there. Now, in Matthew's gospel, 
we don't have the birth narrative. That's in Luke's gospel. So going into the house signals to us that they're already settled in Bethlehem. There, there's, there's, there's not no room for them in the end. Double negative for, um, for emphasis. Jump in your bed. Get in your bed. In your bed. There's a good boy. There's a whoop. Off your nose. So they're already settled there. So this makes me think that um, this was well after the birth. Well after the birth. So they find, in, they go into the house and they see the child with Mary, his mother, and they fall down and falling down, they worshiped him. They got on their knees. Kneelers are great in the church. Kneelers are great. They're not Roman Catholic. They're not, uh, they're, 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 they're how you proskune. You kneel before the God. And, and, and if you, um, if you, uh, uh, don't like kneeling before God on the last day, you're going to kneel at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Um, and so I want you to, I want you to sort of, um, I want you to take this in that these Gentiles, not the king, not the scribes, not the important people, these Gentiles are the one who fall down and worship him and opening up their treasures, they present to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Gold. We'll get to that in just a second. Frankincense for a priest. Myrrh. Now myrrh. Myrrh's a strange gift. It's a sort of a... This would be sort of like giving baby Jesus, giving mother, uh, uh, showing up to the hospital when somebody's born, uh, somebody, when your friend has a baby and giving them uh, a little casket. It's kind of, it's kind of icky. Myrrh. Myrrh's a signal. This baby is going to die. Myrrh's going to show up later on in the gospel on when, when they take his dead body and they pack it with myrrh. Like they just throw the myrrh on there and they throw him into the, the, the tomb. So we got, we got the frankincense for a priest. Myrrh. I used to say gold for a king. I used to say gold for a king. But my buddy, Chris Hall, who's pastor in, um, at Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas, he says gold because the, the Lord is going to purchase salvation. He's going to buy something. He's going to redeem his people from their sins. Gold, because he's going to buy something. He's going to buy salvation with his holy blood and his bitter sufferings and death. Frankincense, because he's our high priest who goes into the holiest place and gives his sacrifice of his body. And myrrh, because he's going to die. The person, he's going to die. Um, he's going to die. Being warned in a dream. There's a dream again. Being warned in a dream not to return to heaven, Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. So um, just sort of take this in for a second. They leave the baby. They leave the... Um, they leave... The baby, they leave his mother, they leave the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. And they go back a different way. And and nobody cares. Nobody cares. The priests don't care. The king doesn't care. They don't care. Nobody cares. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph again, saying, Rise, take the child and his matera, his mother, and fuga, flee to Egypt, um, and remain there until I tell you. For, for Herod is about to search for the child in order to apolesi him. There, he's he's going to try to kill him. 
He's going to try to destroy him. Herod cares. But Herod wants to kill Jesus. And so what does is, what is Joseph do? Whatever the Lord speaks, Joseph does what the Lord says. And so Joseph gets up. He takes the child and his mother by night and departs from Egypt. He slips out of time. God has to flee. Think about this. God has to social distance himself from people in order to save you. God has to flee Bethlehem because of the terrible thing that's going to happen. He has to flee Bethlehem in order to rescue you, in order to save you. And Joseph, faithful Joseph, gets up, takes the child and his mother, and flees to Egypt. Don't miss this, though. Egypt should make your ring, make, make your belt, make the bells in your ears ring. There's a way to do sound effects. I need, I, I need the thing that allows me to do sound effects. Where is that? Um, I'm going to find it tomorrow. I could have, I could have rang a bell. Your ears should ring. Your ears should ring. Think about this. Think about this. Egypt. Egypt. The children of Israel were in Egypt. They were in slavery in Egypt. They, the children of Israel, failed. Abraham and David crowd, a bunch of failures. A bunch of failures. This king, this kid, Israel, down to one. He goes into Egypt. Is he going to be faithful? And he remained there until the death of Herod. They remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill that which was spoken by the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. That's Israel. Out of Egypt I have called my son. But here, Matthew, to the Abraham and David club, Matthew uses this verse to say, Jesus went into Egypt and out of Egypt I have called my son. He comes out of Egypt. Jesus is Israel. Jesus is Israel reduced to one to save his people. The people who died in the wilderness. The people who were unfaithful. This one is faithful. Even unto death. Death on the cross. You know, I'm going to, we're going to do this Bible study tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, Erica's going to kill me, but 2 p.m. And the reason why we're going to do this is because I want to get through the, um, the massacre in Jerusalem tomorrow. Um, but I want you to just take this in. Jerusalem, where the king is, doesn't care that he's born. They know who he is, but they don't care. The wise men tell him, Herod turns, where's the Christ to be born? He knows the one born king is the Christ. They don't care. In fact, it's between not caring and wanting to destroy him. Gentiles, sinners, you and me, Go to Jerusalem to get down on our knees and worship him, the one born king of the Jews. And they present our, their gifts, gold, because he's going to purchase and win our salvation. Fit for a king, Sal uh, frankincense, because he's the high priest that's going to make the sacrifice in the tem temple. And myrrh, because he's going to die. And just like Israel, he's going to go into e exile in Egypt. But he's going to come out of Egypt. And he will be faithful. And faithfulness, his faithfulness, saves us. Thanks for joining us today. I thought we had a good time. Two o'clock tomorrow, same time for uh, the last chap the last bit of this chapter. We're going to have the slaughter of those little babies uh, tomorrow. Um, but uh, sort of uh, stay safe, stay um, smart, and um, we'll be with you as long as this is going on. And then we'll see what we need to do afterwards. Um, thanks for joining us.